just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Phase one of Operation GMAT Focus complete. Got the books. That's what this video will be about. My uh, first impressions of uh, this new test, GMAT Focus, right? Uh, phase two is going to be when I can take the official practice test, which is not available yet. Uh, if you would be interested in kind of looking over my shoulder as I take that practice test, I could do a live event and uh, probably could even interact with you uh, through the chat as I'm taking that test. Uh, if that's something that's of interest to you, let me know in the comments below. And we can make a deal. If, uh, if this video gets to 100 watch hours, that means people around the world have spent on aggregate 100 hours watching this particular video, then I'll uh, take that practice test live once it becomes available. Uh, how can you help this video get to 100 watch hours? Uh, first of all, comment down below. Uh, you could comment what time of day, what day of the week would be good for you for this live event. Let's all use uh, Eastern Standard Time just to make it simple. So whatever time of day is good for you, convert it to New York City. I'm in Toronto, but that's the same thing. Uh, and uh, put that in the comments below. So that's one way for you to help this video get to 100 watch hours. Uh, another thing you can do is hit the like button below. And uh, the most effective thing you can do is share this video with others or rewatch this video several times. So if we get to 100 watch hours, I promise I will take that practice test live and you will get to see how I think through the questions and also uh, what mistakes I make. Uh, so, uh, so that could be exciting. Now, uh, as for these books, I now know a lot more, we now know a lot more about this new test, GMAT Focus. And I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed because for some reason I was expecting a new question type. They called it data sufficiency logic questions. Uh, turns out that is uh, not the case at all. Uh, really all they've done, and this is probably the part that, that is most interesting to you, all they've done with the test is they've taken out geometry. So I can confirm there's no more geometry in, this book, in these books. Uh, interestingly, they still have in, you know, in the beginning of the book when they give some theory lessons, they still have there the coordinate geometry material. But I have not seen any questions that test coordinate geometry in either this book, which is the new main OG, or this book, which is the new quant supplement, a quantitative review or in this book, Data Insights Review. And I'll talk about what is in these books in, in just a minute. But uh, long story short, geometry is gone. Coordinate geometry, I guess they reserve the right to test that, but I have not seen a single question testing that in these books. Why is it still in the theory? My guess is because they put it under the category of functions. So they don't call that geometry, they call it part of functions, and that's probably why they justify keeping that inside those books. So what have they done? They've, they've removed geometry, and then they took all of data sufficiency out of the quant section and threw it into this new section called data insights together with what used to be known as integrated reasoning. So what's left in the quant section? Only problem solving, no data sufficiency at all. It's only problem solving, and there's no geometry. Everything else, as far as I can tell, is still there. I'm still seeing in these official guides questions that test three-way overlapping sets, which I personally have not seen on the actual test since 2006. Are they going to test that now? I don't know. I don't think so. But I will take the actual test by the end of this year as well. So I'll let you know if I see any. Uh, they still have combinatorics and probability questions. Again, they don't come up a lot in the actual test these days. but I'll take the test again by the end of this year and let you know if I see any. So those are still in those official guides. Will they be in the test? I don't know yet. On the verbal side, they took sentence correction out. There's no more sentence correction. So I can confirm that as well. In the Data Insights book, so that's this book here, 
you would think that there would be data sufficiency and what used to be known as integrated reasoning, but integrated reasoning really requires a computer because you have to be able to sort the different uh, tables in different ways and you have to be able to switch from, uh, from one tab to another tab. It's more like an Excel spreadsheet type thing. Uh, so there's still no integrated reasoning inside the data, uh, sorry, the data insights review book. There's only data sufficiency. So this, this entire book is only data sufficiency. You can see it's pretty thin. Um, I will note that the actual questions don't start until page 102. So the first 100 pages are just theory. Uh, they've put in some uh, cheat sheets with formulas, uh, which in my opinion are worse than useless, kind of like the solutions, the official solutions at the end, worse than useless. I would avoid those at all costs. Uh, and then in the, the main official guide, which is yellow now, same deal. Right? So you have, you start with quant, and so quant is only problem solving questions. There are a total of 228 problem solving questions in this book. Most of them are very familiar to me from previous official guides. So a bit disappointing. Uh, and then after quant, we get to data insights. And again, data insights in the book is only data sufficiency. Um, so that starts from question 229 through question 332. So just over 100 data sufficiency questions. Uh, of course, no geometry within those data sufficiency questions, but otherwise they're just data sufficiency questions like, uh, like they've always been. Uh, and many of them are familiar to me from previous official guides. Uh, and then you have the verbal section, which doesn't include sentence correction. So it's just reading comprehension followed by critical reasoning. Again, lots of familiar questions from previous years. Um, and, you know, it's funny because if you look at the quantitative review book and the data insights review book, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but they're both exceptionally thin books. And why is that? Well, because in the previous edition, that was just one book and it was called the quantitative review book. Now they've taken data sufficiency out of that book and put it in this new book. Uh, really a cosmetic change more than anything else. Um, not as exciting as I thought or as I hoped. The test itself, the biggest difference, the biggest differences, as I mentioned in the last video I published, I'll link to that up above me. Uh, biggest differences are no sentence correction, no geometry, and integrated reasoning will now count towards your overall score. Uh, one minor difference is that when you look at your score report and you'll look at those uh, subscores, by the way, they go from 60 to 90 now. So they used to go from somewhere around 10 to 51. Those were the, the raw scores for each of the sections. They've changed that now. I saw that in the beginning of, uh, of this book where they talk about how the test is scored, uh, the overall score will be 205 to 805, just to help admissions committees uh, tell where, uh, which test it is. Is it the old GMAT or the new GMAT? So the point I was trying to make is that uh, data sufficiency is now separate from problem solving. So when you look at the raw scores, you'll have a raw score that's only for problem solving, and you'll have a separate raw score that uh, contains data sufficiency and integrated reasoning. And that will be the data insights section. Let me know if you have any questions uh, specifically regarding these books or uh, really anything GMAT related. I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions in the comments. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.